This video is a little different from my usual expatriate interviews. We will hear not only from an American who has chosen to leave the country and live abroad in Cuenca, Ecuador, but also from a young Ecuadorian entrepreneur and magician who has a lot of interaction with immigrants from all over the world. And we get a fun glimpse of expatriate entertainment. Uh, is anybody here over 80 years old? May I see a show? Cork Proctor is a one-of-a-kind comedian and one of the more interesting and real people I've had the pleasure of meeting in my international travels. The guy's in a hospice. He's got an hour and a half to live. His wife is there running around. It's very quiet. He is hooked up to about 14 tubes and 14 drip bottles. And all of a sudden, he's in a coma. And he wakes up. He wakes up. He's wide awake. And he smells something, and it's chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip cookies brought him out of the coma. And he races up out of the bed. He's been in the bed waiting to pass. He pulls out all the tubes, all the things, the oxygen, and he falls out of bed, and he starts crawling toward the smell of the chocolate chip cookies. And he's crawling and crawling and crawling. He rounds the corner in the hospital, in his little gown, and he, now he sees a table in a room covered with chocolate chip cookies. And he crawls in with the last out of his strength. He reaches up and he grabs a cookie and his wife comes along and whacks his pants. She said, no, those are for the funeral. <laughs> he is a comedian, but more than that, he is a philosopher and a social commentator who reflects on his own life experience and that of others. His decades of work in Las Vegas and Reno has been widely recognized and his experiences introduced him to all the top name show business people who performed in those venues. Cork's autobiography, My Mind is an Open Mouth, tells the personal story of a maverick student with a sense of humor and adventure who turned his muse into a lifetime show business career. On my last trip to Cuenca, I had the pleasure of talking with Cork and fellow comedian Buddy Winston who has written for the Jay Leno Show. Here's Buddy talking about life in Cuenca. There are Americans here who still haven't figured out the exchange rate, I swear to God. <laughs> it's like, a dollar? A dollar! <laughs> it's not hard to figure out. And, then, and the language, they're messing with us, I'm telling you. You know, I get here, lawyers are doctors, avocado is avocate, but lawyers are avocado. <laughs> When I got here, I thought there were guacamole stands everywhere. You know? Y'all have an avocado and cheese, please, you know? Well, they're, they're, they're messing with us. The third performer that day, Juan Estrella, is a world-traveled magician and the owner of a local restaurant. <laughs> Following their performances, I interviewed Cork and Juan at Juan's restaurant, Cuchara Magica. I hope that you enjoyed our encounter, and if not, in the attitude of Cork, that's your problem. My dad was a very astute man. He went to University of Wisconsin. He suffered through the Depression. He had a little boy that he never really understood, even till the day he passed away. What? You're my kid? <laughs> So one time my father was teaching me to drive in Las Vegas and he had a terrible habit of kicking me in the leg and telling me, don't do that, sit up straight, both hands on the wheel. So now we pull up to a stop sign in Las Vegas. And my old man's sitting there and he's smoking a cigarette. Thank you. And he says, what does it mean when the stoplight's green? Well, I said, it means you can go. 
I said, no, it doesn't. It just means the signal's working. <laughs> the cemetery is full of people that have the green light, but they're just as dead as if it were real. That's I taught my daughters that 40 years ago when I was teaching them to drive. I said, don't ever believe that means you could go. You can't go. There's some woman that just dropped acid, smoked a doobie, and did about a half gallon of white wine, and she's not even thinking about driving. <laughs> she's having a, an ovarian explosion or something. It just means the light is working. I thought that was great. That's a good story. Yes. Well, it's true. So, you know, right now there are um, about 6,000 out of 600,000 um, 6, expatriates. How do you think they're impacting the local society, and what things should they do to be more adaptive to this culture? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. I think the best thing we can do is to come down here and enjoy this beautiful country, and we are guests. We are American guests in Ecuador. We have no license to walk around and be braggarts and be snotty to the people and make remarks like, well, they ought to learn more English or they ought to learn more Spanish. Wait a minute, they don't make those kind of comments. And the story I told about going to a magazine rack here at a super maxi, a market, and the woman in front of me was going, why don't they speak more English? <laughs> and I tapped her on the shoulder and said, yo, they don't speak English because it's Ecuador. They speak Spanish. <laughs> well, and I said, you know what? If you're not happy here, why don't you go home? Go home and tell your neighbors what a great country this is and why you couldn't adapt because you thought they should all speak English. They're not going to all learn English. There are people there that will never learn English because they're not interested, okay? Even though it's a dollar exchange, the monetary system is U.S. currency, and they make their own dollar coins. And then I looked at her and I said, this woman is obviously wearing her brother's farm clothes, <laughs> so she probably has no idea of what the hell she's doing. And those kind of people give all of us a bad name because they're expecting something that isn't here. You just have to come. When you go to a beautiful place like the Grand Canyon, I mean, do you get up in the morning standing on the North Rim looking down and saying, well, why isn't there a McDonald's here? Come on, stop it. <laughs> Unfortunately, some people do. Um, I don't understand, Craig. The, the bad thing is, I think that if you alienate a bunch of these lovely, sweet, nice people who are family-oriented, family You've done a lot of damage. Doesn't matter whether you tip well, if you're dressed well, if you smell good, whatever. If you make these people feel inferior through your American arrogance, and that's what it comes down to, well, we're from so-and-so. I never took that attitude, and I will refuse to take that attitude, and it really makes me bad when I see people do that. Don't do that. Come here and enjoy. When you go to a health spa, do you walk into the kitchen and go, you know what? I got to have three eggs this morning and hash browns. You don't get three eggs and you pay $400 a day. They give you what they want and you accept it. And that's the way it should be here. I think you should just come. I've never had a real crossword with anybody. There have been a couple of minor incidents with cab drivers, but now they're meters. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we're old school. We pay to go to Mal del Rio, which is about three, four miles. We pay the old rate, $3. We don't care what the meter says. The guy's got to make a living. Of you have maintenance, overhead, gasoline, blah, 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 tires, brakes, whatever. Yeah, I, I've been amazed by hearing people's stories of bitching about the, uh, you know, the taxi rates are the ta getting charged an extra quarter when these are the, must be the cheapest taxis in the world. Of course. And, you know, truthfully, as I say to many people, Without trying to be a smart aleck, like I said, look, when you got off the plane in Quito or Guayaquil, you were 50% ahead of the curve. You mean to tell me our apartment's $400 a month? It's 1,000 feet. It's gorgeous. We can look out and see 12,000-foot mountains, and over here we can see halfway down to, you know, Vilcabamba. I said, we, you know, we came here, we just got lucky. We get this beautiful apartment, and the landlord and her husband are lovely people. We even pay the rent a couple of days early. It's paid today. I don't care. We're not, oh, we have to save money. Save it for what? When you get to be my age, when you're 82 years old, you shouldn't be saving anything. 
Put on clean underwear, clean socks, have fun, get drunk, throw up, and be somebody. Stop worrying about, oh, what if? You know, that's what happened to America. What if? Okay. You know. Well, I can very much relate to what you're talking about, having had a pretty much of a maverick life. To sum stuff. up your question, young man, and you are, I don't think there's that much here to get disturbed about. I mean, if you accept the fact that you're in a foreign country, and this is as good as it's going to get for you, then just shut up and enjoy. The food is great. The people are friendly. The taxis are cheap. I tried to tell a guy in Las Vegas on Magic Jack. He says, well, how much are the cabs? I said, well, last month I kept track for fun. I spent $100. Whoa. I said, that's a tank of gas in Vegas. $100? You're driving a Ford truck that gets about eight miles to the gallon. It's a tank of gas. So it, it, it's not cost prohibitive here. It's for, And the medical facilities in Cuenca are gorgeous. The hospitals are beautiful. The Latina Clinica and the Mall del Rio Hospital. And they're beautiful. And the doctor makes a house call for $20. Come on. You can't even get it on the business cards here. The doctors and the abogados, the lawyers, put their personal cell phone on there. Mm -hmm. Try that in America. <laughs> I haven't seen a doctor make a house call since 1950. <laughs> and that's probably, he was coming to get a chicken somewhere out in northern Nevada. And, and the, the medical care as far as you're concerned has been good? Perfect. Uh, what other, uh, any other stories or uh, comments that you'd like to make about, or messages that you'd like to give to people who are considering becoming expatriates? Well, I think here. there's or our I'll friend Christine Collins, excuse me, Craig, wrote a book called the Golden Girl's Guide to Retirement in Quaker. It's a great book. Christine's a lovely lady. We've become friends. And, uh, my wife, Carolyn, edited the book for her. It's a beautiful book. It's basically a guide to what to look out for down here. And just use common sense. You know, I don't think there's any more violence in this particular part of the country than there is anywhere. There isn't much, if there's any. I haven't seen anything. Don't wear a lavish watch. Women shouldn't wear expensive earrings. Don't tempt the fates. Do not tempt the fates. There will always be somebody that needs a meal. Of course. This country does not have an average income of $100,000 per person. I mean, many of the people here work long, hard hours for short money. And that's why I think it would behoove, there's a good word, sounds like something you do to a deer, behoove, <laughs> just, I think it would behoove everybody down here, just leave a decent gratuity. It's 10%. Here's a bill from today. It's 10%. There's also a 12% surcharge of value tax. But because we're old, we get that back next month. We don't care. I mean, it's, the point is, these are the standards, and you must accept them. When you join the Marine Corps or the Navy SEALs, you don't get a choice. <laughs> they tell you to get out there half naked and pick up a telephone pole and run five miles down the beach. You want to be a SEAL or do you want to be a wussy? Pick up the telephone pole and run. Come down here, be a gentleman, be a lady. I haven't seen any incidents. I've been here two years. I've traveled well, pretty well around the country with great success. I don't dress lavishly. I look like a guy from a homeless shelter. That's okay. <laughs> I dress comfortably. I'm clean. I try to be articulate. I'm working on my Spanish. I think that's more than fair. I think the people really appreciate the fact that many Americans come here and they really do try to speak Spanish, even if it isn't flawless. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get words like uh, papel hygienico, it's toilet paper. <laughs> when you need that. That's the most important paper down here. That's more important <laughs> than your visa. Papel hygienico. Mm -hmm. uh, my overall observation is, and I tell everybody in Vegas, well, we're gonna, we have some questions. I said, no, 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 no. The question window is closed. Get your butt on the plane and come down here. <laughs> you can afford it. You have money. You have a big home, two cars, a bunch of dogs. Just lock up everything, come down here and stay a couple, three weeks. Get on this wonderful airline, Lon or Copa or whatever you want. I don't fly domestic airlines out of Vegas anymore because it takes forever to get here. I could have flown to China. I mean, you want to stop 12 times and make a milk run, you know. So I think overall, this is a great place. It's a good bang for a buck. 
And it's fun to go to the markets here because you can eat off a full-size pig that's been barbecued and have a great lunch for $2 and a quarter. Mm. Pork, I mean really good seasoned pork. Mm -hmm. And a piece of skin, and a salad, and some arroz, rice. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that in America. I mean, I haven't had a $2 lunch in 40 years. <laughs> and if I did, it was probably at a hot dog stand. But to my overall view, just quickly, it's a little late to shorten it up, but it's just, uh, it's a wonderful place to live. And I'm here to let die. I don't want to go back to the States. I, I have left a city that has polluted air, water's disappearing, Lake Mead in Las Vegas is going in this conversation. It's yeah. probably gone down three inches. <laughs> you can't say that the aquifer, all that water we knew as kids in the 40s were the bubbling springs and the wells, and yeah. it's over. Yeah, that's so one of the, the most beautiful things here, the water, the rivers. Oh, four rivers. rivers. I can't think of a town in America with four rivers running through it. There may be. Certainly not with clean water. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's a great experience. The culture here, I don't know much about the politics, and I'm not interested. I don't care whether it's, you know, whatever it is. But the culture here is wonderful. The symphony is great. And they are subsidized by the government. And all the players are charming people, and they really know their instruments. And they sight read. They can see nap droppings from 20 feet away. So they, you know, they're, they're just great. And the plays, we saw a play in English done by high school students. I was really touched. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. yeah, really. That's amazing. And the design and the, and the basic culture here is wonderful. And the thing that I really like, familial. The parents take the child by the hand when they cross the street. I mean, it's it's really touched my heart. I went, God, isn't this great? And spend their Sunday afternoon. In America, kids. you wander around some of the malls. There's six kids don't even know where their parents are, <laughs> and the parents don't know where the kids are. They're yeah. just well, running up and down the escalator. <laughs> you know, what are you doing? Oh, where's your mom and dad? Oh, <laughs> gee, and we wonder why they disappear. Okay, don't see that here. Of course, there aren't that many escalators either. So. <laughs> Any other questions? No, I, I want to thank you very much for participating in the Global Community College and Patriot Project and uh, tell you how much I enjoyed uh, not only your uh, performance, but uh, your book, which I'm reading. Thank you. And those uh, of you that have not fallen asleep will have, <laughs> have a second, second for the book. We'll have a second tape. <laughs> and the book is called My Mind is an Open Mouth. There you go. And it's available? Amazon. Amazon. Go to Amazon. Okay. I cool. think it's $3.99. Very good. And if you don't like it, hey, have a nice <laughs> trip. Okay, right now we're uh, in the, the Kuchana Cafe Magica, Magica restaurant. And uh, who are we talking with? Uh, my name is Juan Estrella. Uh, I'm the owner of the restaurant. I'm 23, I'm pretty young. I feel young. <laughs> so <laughs> young? That's You're young. a lot younger than we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the owner of the restaurant and I'm also a magician. Ah, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I started magic at uh, nine years old, uh, eight and a half. You started when you were eight or nine years old? Yeah, no, nine years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm 23. Um, I didn't have any inter interest before that. I just one cousin of mine showed me a trick, I like it, and I tried to perform like other magicians from TV, uh -huh. and then start, I never saw me as a prof professional magician because I split my time between the restaurant and the magic shows, and I also do magic here, I like close up kind of thing. But yeah, magic uh, just turned my life. It's what I what I do. It's not what, yeah. Uh, I saw you in a performance uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, you did a great trick. Uh, how did you learn to do the magic? I mean, did you teach yourself? Did you have a teacher? I taught myself. Uh, the thing that I'll do, I'll watch somebody on the TV and I'll try to do what they do. Uh -huh. I also a good thing because most of the time I will do it differently. And when, I, when someone will teach me how it's really done, mine will be different. So be like, oh, I, can, I can think different than the other guys. Uh -huh. I'll have kind of my own way to do magic. To That's what I like. your own style? My own, own style, my own techniques, my own movements. I, I also have a lot of like teachers who told me, not when I was even a kid, but through the years, because I like to travel to different countries, just uh -huh. 
it's so where are some of the places that you've been? Uh, I have been in the States, I have been in London, in England, I have been in Mexico, Chile, Peru, Guatemala. Was that as a tourist or to, I know, to, to do magic? To do, do magic, oh, as tell, a conference. Tell us about some of those experiences. Well, uh, most of them were uh, something called, that is called Flasoma. That is where all the Latin American magicians uh -huh. and the people from Spain, we meet up for like eight years, eight years, eight days. Uh -huh. uh, we talk about magic, we teach ourselves Where do you magic. meet? Where? Uh, the la latest one was in Chile, in Santiago okay. de Chile. It was eight years. Uh, on February of the year that is coming, it's on uh, Uruguay. Your one is going to be seven days. So uh -huh. it's uh, really nice because you can see the top magicians, like the world champions. Uh, the magic is different because you can sit with them, have a beer, have a chat. They are not like selfish in their art. Yeah. So they like to show you things, and I like to show them things. Uh -huh. oh, so you teach each other. Yeah, I try to teach what I have. Um, what I love showing to them. Like it's, I'm, I'm still like a kid. Like, <laughs> when I create something, I like to show it to people. <laughs> Is that open to the public? I mean, like, uh, can... No. Uh, you need to be a magician. Um, how they find out if you're a magician, you have to be a member of like a magic club. Okay. In my case, we have the magic club from here, from Cuenca that me and two friends we created four years ago. I'm the current president. Um, we are part of the Ecuadorian group of magicians. Uh, mm -hmm. The Ecuadorian group of magicians is part of the world of okay. magicians. So it's just like that. And you're originally yes. from Cuenca? From Cuenca, yeah. From Cuenca. And you, I mean, you're obviously a very busy young man. You have, uh, you're 23 years old, you have a restaurant. Uh, I love to be busy. I cannot be like sitting at home watching TV. I don't, I don't like that. Uh, full of energy. Well, I was raised, uh, my dad also has a restaurant, um, uh -huh. who's the oldest restaurant here in, in Cuenca, ah, in Pampa. Really? So I grew up in there, in the kitchen, uh, sure. working. Second nature. Huh? Yes, yeah, I love to work. My father is a workaholic. I'm not, because they say that if you live doing your hobby, what you love is not work. So I do uh -huh. my magic, so I'm actually not working. I'm just enjoying myself. What's your favorite dish here? My favorite dish, uh, barbecue ribs. Barbecue ribs? Barbecue ribs. Uh, Sharon loves barbecue ribs. Oh, you love them. Tender. <laughs> they go out from the bottom. Slow cook them? Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> well, everything is good here in the steaks, you know, everything. <laughs> so, what's next for you? Where are you going from here? Well, I'm coming to Uruguay in February. Uh, I have a lot of projects. For first, a lot of people have told me uh, why you don't go out, why you don't go to live in another country. Uh, I have been living in another country, I lived in England for a year, Mexico for a year and a half. But for me, I think I, I created magic in here with some friends. There was no magician before us. So mm -hmm. I think we have like a child and we have to raise it until he's really so old. So you're the, you're the young father of magic in Cuenca. Yeah, and I was really, when we did our first show, uh, that was seven years ago, we did it in a big theater, 400 people. Two shows, we were 15, 16, we were not, we didn't have a clue what we were doing, but we went really well. And, uh, uh -huh. people. Speak English very well, did you learn English in school? Or? Uh, no, actually the English in my school was really bad, like the teachers were not. <laughs> like my Spanish in school? <laughs> well, the teachers were not as good as they supposed to be to teach kids. Uh, uh -huh. I watched it like watching movies with the subtitles, traveling a lot of the side of my dad. His brothers and sisters, they live in the States, so I like to travel a lot. And just practice it. Yeah. So you have a, a lot of interaction with gringos who come here. Uh, do you have any advice to them about how to get along well, how to how to enjoy Cuenca to its fullest? I think they just have to enjoy it. They don't have to think harder <laughs> of things. Like I have seen because I follow like all the Facebook pages and gringo posts, and I see a lot of people saying, "Hey, I'm going there in two years. What I need to get? Do you have this, 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 this?" I have met a lot of people that just came here and said, okay, it's, it's, a, it's a city, it's just a city, we have everything, but all like the, the jungle, you don't enjoy yourself in here, it's, yeah, it's great, you just have to live your life. But uh, I want to thank you very much, yeah. any other comments you'd like to make or advice you'd like to uh, uh, give to young magicians or uh, to young magicians, to everybody, uh, I think will be... Well, first to the magicians, just keep practicing. Practicing, practicing is the, practicing. the best thing, especially if you're in the restaurant. I kind of do it 24-7. If I'm not doing it to people, I'm sitting there at my table trying to do uh -huh. things. And the people in life, just enjoy life, live the moment, don't overthink it. One more, but who's your favorite musician? Uh, magician? Uh, at the moment, well, I love Harry Houdini, he was a legend. So at the moment, I love a Spanish guy called uh, Dani Ortiz. Just do card, card work, but it's amazing. I've seen him 
four, three times, I still have no clue about that. It's just, <laughs> okay. That's quite a compliment from another magician. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, thank you very much for uh, us, uh, sharing your stories with us, and uh, we'll see you for dinner, and then next time, the magic show. Perfect, anytime. Right. Thank, thank you very you much. So much. Thanks.